Hello YouTube, it's Philip 20 again. This is both of the panels with the covers off. This is our power coming in the house. You can see from right here, power pole right there. And it comes right into the house right here. I stuffed it with insulation because I try to keep uh, heat from escaping. This panel, it has two bars that go up the top and it connects in the middle in between each single circuit each other circuit has the same bar and the same thing with the other circuits so like this one and this one and this one is on the same bar and this one this one and this one is on the same bar but it alternates so if you look at this here this is our uh added sub panel that I put in for solar I put it in just for the solar you can see I've got a ground here it runs outside also got a ground wire that runs over to the inverter runs over there to the inverter and uh, it grounds the chassis but it doesn't ground the internal parts the internal parts has to be grounded to a separate rod let's not get into that we'll just talk about talk about this so we've got two breakers this is my inverter breaker right here goes in right here this is my inverter wire it goes from, from the inverter powers this breaker here now if i was to turn this breaker on at the same time as this breaker it's going to feed each other okay it's going to power both because this breaker here comes from the main panel which has power all the time it runs up over across and then in this side here so i've got these two breakers can never be on at the same time i never want to power this panel because i have an off-grid top inverter since i have an off-grid top inverter i'm not getting paid from the power company because they only give me about half of the money that i would be earning so Let's ignore that. We have an off-grid inverter, so we want to separate the power. And that's what this bar is for. This bar separates it. Now, each one of these circuits is my 115 volt circuits. Now, I will change this if I need more breakers. I will take two breakers, I'll take these two out, and these two out and that'll leave me four spaces and there are breakers that allow me to put two breakers on one side so I will do the bedroom top breakers there because they don't use much power and the, the bigger breakers will go for the refrigerators microwaves the uh, mini stove that I got that I cook off of solar with so I can put two breakers in one slot so I can take these two wires and put one extra here and one extra here because it'll have additional slots and then I'll have room for a you know larger breaker which if I wanted to do a double pole breaker which I intend to do because I have a split phase inverter that means I have 110 volts plus 110 volts equals 230 volts it's not the same on every inverter a split phase is really important to me so just remember that that's why we can power a double pole breaker that's 230 volts. I intend on doing this for maybe the dryer that's 230 volts or the stove that's 230 volts. Now I intend on doing this. Uh, I've got some projects that you might be interested in if you just stick around. I've got something that I'm trying to think up, go over and decide if I can if I'm gonna do it or not but if I do it then you guys are gonna love it so if I uh, set it up to where I can run my stove or dryer and everybody's gonna be screaming at the wall you can't run your dryer or stove off of that it'll kill your batteries well I got 3,000 watts of solar coming in and that's actually about 2890 watts is the most I've seen 
the least I've seen with 96 amps, about 2,500 watts. So amps times volts equals watts. So I got a band that goes from 25 volts to 29 volts. And in between that is the amount of voltage I'm getting into the battery. So if I got 29 volts, 29.4 times 96 amps is 1,800-something. You know, 2800 something so you know i'm going to get more power so i'll be able to run something like half of a dryer or so now if i do that that would be awesome then i'll be pulling 2500 watts out of the battery at 2500 2500 kilowatt hours and that would be for one hour the entire amount of power that i'm allowed to consume so I've allowed myself to consume about 3 kilowatts almost. So if I pull 2500 watts out of the battery and 2500 out of the solar, that will be fine. But I don't want to use 2500 watts out of the battery. I don't even want to pull out of the battery. Right now I've fully charged already. I'm at 100% almost. And I'm using more of everything. I got my both refrigerators. Washing machine, dishwasher, been running vacuum cleaners all day, playing video games at the same time my kids are playing video games. So we're doing all that today. And that's because we got good sunshine. We've got a few clouds. And we got real good sunshine. So since we're able to do that today, that's benefiting, you know, us. We're not drawing anything but the dryer one the stove which i have a second cooktop that so i don't use the stove nearly as much and the heat pump i like air conditioning i'm not off grid but i'm trying to go further so we're not going to talk about that just yet so let's get let's just say that i've got some plans to change some things up and give me more space in this panel so I can run something with a heavier load. And I know you're going to be screaming at the wall. You can't do that. Well, if I ever need to, I can just come over here. And then switch the power back over. And I'm, I'm ready to go. But then I have to leave my inverter on, which consumes 200 watts. So I have to turn it off. And then when I'm ready to turn it back on, it resets to 50 hertz. So I have to set it again to 60 hertz. Which is very confusing. So, I mean, we got power that runs to here. Right now we're powering the house off of the grid. And now we're running off of solar. That is how simple it is for me to switch over. So, all these powered by that breaker here. And then when I switch it back over, all these powered by this breaker here, which is connected to this one. So it makes it uh, a little bit easier for you to understand my solar panels are, you know, not exactly the simplest thing to comprehend, but I'm trying to explain it to you in detail. Uh, so if you got any questions, I want you to tell me what you want you ask me what you want to know. Ask me some questions. I do not recommend that anybody does anything or even opens up these panels at all on their own home because you'll die when you touch it. You're going to die because you're if you grab a hold of that connector and your hand closes on it, you're, you're going to die there. You're going to die there. So, you got to learn to respect electricity. So, just, you know, just give you a heads up. There's probably wires inside of that panel that are loosed, over, loosened up over time. And when it disconnects and slaps you in the face and you die from it, it's not my fault. Told you not to get in the panel. This is Philip 20 with Solar Power, Electricity, and Electronics. And I'll holler at y'all later.